Hey guys, uh, my name is Justin, uh, Justin Zhou, and I'm, I'm here to talk to you about machine learning, or uh, more, more specifically, to demystify the stigma around it. Um, so we've all heard of machine learning. Um, it's, it's all over the place nowadays. It's, uh, I, I mean, but there, there is this particular st stigma, like I said, about how difficult it is to use, how difficult it is to implement. And I'm, trying, I'm going to try to dispel a bit of that stigma today. Um, so, but before we get started, a little bit of uh, perspective. Um, Dijkstra used to always believe that uh, we can't really teach computers to think. Um, it's all about syntax, it's all about building a set of rules, a set of an environment where the computer can do what we want it to do. But if we take a look, the data down there actually tells us quite the opposite, doesn't it? It tells a very, very different story about what computers can use to sort of, what it can leverage to sort of infer um, about a lot of the, the, pat the underlying patterns um, inside, of what we, uh, inside the data of what we do. And that is precisely what machine learning is. Um, using, using pattern recognition and some sort of, uh, oftentimes regression analysis, or regression analysis or, or more and more increasingly complex uh, uh, neural nets and structures and, and things like that, um, we're basically asking the computer to make some of these observations that we previously could not. Um, the syntax that we couldn't calculate before, if you will. So it's generally split between supervised and unsupervised learning. Um, supervised is, uh, is basically uh, this idea where we, we label data. We, we give it a, a yes and a no. Press the red button, we you know, slap your hand. We press the green button, we give you a treat, that sort of thing, right? Um, and it's, it's much more controlled, much more easily manipulate, manipulatable, but, um, and so therefore more common, but it's m very expensive, as you can imagine, since somebody has to go in, label everything, and make sure it has a correct answer to, to each input. Unsupervised, much more difficult to control because what, it's, what you're basically asking for it to do is to infer a hidden structure inside of the, of the unlabeled data. Um, so there's really no objectively correct answer. What you're looking for is, oh, this uh, you know, nebulous pattern inside this data that you're feeding it. Um, and so it's much more difficult to use, much less seen, um, aka clustering. But we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, what I'm going to be featuring as my uh, supervised learning uh, algorithm is going to be KNN, otherwise known as k nearest neighbors. k nearest neighbors is, as you can see from the diagram here, um, you basically have a dot, the star here, um, and you give it a set radius at which, oh, sorry, maybe before I begin with that explanation, k nearest neighbors is basically the idea that you, ex you extract the identity of a particular point or a particular piece of datum using its nearest neighbors or the closest, uh, the closest other points that look like it. Poorly phrased, but notwithstanding. Um, if we take a look at uh, a K of three, you basically have two purple points and one yellow point, rendering it as a purple element. However, if you expand that to six elements, now you have four yellow, if I can type correctly, yes, and two, uh, two purple, which will render it as a yellow. So a lot of times it's, it's, it's how you train, is it overtraining, is it undertraining? What is the scope of what you are looking at? That's very important. K means, on the other hand, this will be my unsupervised uh, uh, um, uh, learning algorithm, excuse me. Uh, so the idea is nothing's really labeled, as you can see. What, I, what I've done is essentially, or people, what people have done is create four centroids, the green points. And they start at a particular point, and they find the closest points to it, the black points. Um, they recenter after extending to all of the uh, align to all the points. You recenter uh, your centroid in the middle of all of your of your cluster, and then what you do is you then find the closest points to each centroid again, seeing as the centroid has moved, and you keep re rinsing and repeating until you reach some sort of stasis, aka when the centroid ceases to move or moves so minimally that it no longer matters. So. What I did was I built uh, KNN and K means and basically had it run on um, a server and uh, tried to extract actual data from it. So what I did is for all, most of you guys, I think you know that I'm a foodie. I love my food and I'm trying to build a food blog. So uh, what I tried to do was essentially take four tags. Uh, it's, it's an array of, uh, you know, first element being wine, second beer, third cheese, four meats. Very simple. And um, what's going to happen is articles are going to have this particular tag. If it's about wine and cheese, you're going to have a 1010, right? Um, one being yes, or being no. 
um, easy enough. However, you want to normalize it because you want to have everything add up to one in the end. This is all percentage based. Uh, uh, so basically, I just divide by the total number of tags for each for each tag within. Now, the trick to to this particular process was understanding that you can compare articles to users, um, where users are very similar to articles, right? Um, perhaps not in real life, but um, at the very least within the scope of my application here, you're seeing that users are also looking at these articles with these four tags. So whatever they read, so for example, let's say they read a wine and cheese article. So, sorry, to start off, let's say this person has read one wine article. So they'll have one one inside their wine index. For wine, if they read a wine and cheese article, that's two more indices. So add one to, or two more uh, uh, tags. So add one to wine, add one to cheese. And uh, so that'll give me two divided by three, and then one divided by three for the, for the cheese index. And so that'll get me my uh, user comparison to my articles. And so now you can see I'm sort of building this map, right? This graph of what exactly, where exactly I can put my user in comparison to um, my articles. Now, I wish I could show you a graph, but this is a four-dimensional uh, plane. So, or not plane, four-dimensional, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, object, and I can't really do that. So I guess what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to show you how this works. Um, so let's see. Exciting, exciting. Um, I'm just npm start. Oh, hope I can get the syntax right. Cool. So um, I have a server running. Um, I have a database with uh, users and articles. Hashes, don't worry about them. Uh, I don't have time to explain. But afterwards, if you want to talk to me about it, absolutely. I have a list of recommendations. Currently empty. Tags. Uh, Justin currently has read nothing. Um, so let's say we have Justin read um, something about, uh, I don't know, let's say wine. So it's article about wine and tomato pairing. Great. Um, so now if I take a look, it's refreshed. And he has read one article about wine. Um, and so I've, if you look at the console log, it's basically rendered out this list of articles. If you look at them, uh, they're all about wine, every single last one of them. However, if I do this, say he wants to read about, uh, let's see, cheese, blue cheese. So now there's cheese in the recommended, uh, oh, sorry, hold on, refresh the database. Yep, there we go. So um, you'll end up with uh, cheese inside of the recommenda uh, recommended uh, uh, articles. But now let's say, let's say he reads another one about beer, right? So now I've introduced beer as well. But what I'm doing right now is you can't really see what's going on, but maybe if I do this a couple more times, you will. Cool. So we take a look, right? Where were we before? If I can find it, right? So we look. We, we were looking at cheese, beer, wine. There's a whole bunch of cheese, wine, beer, a whole bunch of things coming up. But as I looked at more and more beer articles, all the recommended features has have moved over to being beer, simply because of the fact that uh, I was typing too fast. But um, simply because of the fact that it's recorded the user as reading that many more beer articles, and therefore it's recognized me as a beer lover and therefore will give me more beer articles. And of course, if I now do this with, uh, I don't know, bacon. We haven't looked at bacon or meats yet. I just, I don't really know. At the end, yep. What will happen is, since I refreshed it a whole bunch, uh, um, now, well, now you'll sort of see that it's a lot about beer still, but a lot about meat as well. So, but it's still more about, I, I have more clicks on beer than I do for meat, and so therefore there are more articles about beer. Anyway, so that's the, that's the, that's the demo. Um, now, if you can imagine, there, there's so many more applications of this in an actual website. I can pull this up as articles as opposed to <laughs> you guys looking at text in my console log. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I mean, that is in the very essence k-means. You saw that it was fairly successful. It, was, it could have been a little bit more successful with a couple more points. It could have been a little bit more accurate, a little bit more um, well-driven. But it was responsive, right? When I clicked on a couple of more beer, or a couple more beer articles, it quickly shifted over to beer. And then when it went to meats, it went over to meats again. 
Now, k-means, on the other hand, does not do anything quite similar. I did the same prep, the same application, um, <laughs> as, I, as I had previously explained, um, using centroids. But what happened was it was much slower since the, the placement of the centroid really matters. If you remember, we placed all the centroids on the left, which meant that it takes a lot more shifting for it to get to where it needs to be. And if you screw up your placements at the beginning, it will badly affect um, uh, what your outcomes are going to be. Um, and so, getting to the issues uh, of, of what I had done, um, namely K, K, and N, because we thought it was a fairly successful uh, algorithm. But there are a couple of issues, namely pop population density. First, um, it's, it's, it, the problem is it's a stepwise function, not, not non-continuous. Because if you remember, the way we sort of categorized each article was simply just to divide by divide all the tags by the total number of tags. So you had a very even spread for between all the all the, uh, the article tags. But an article is not equally about wine and cheese. It could be more about wine or more about cheese. And that's something I failed to do. Um, and similarly, as you get higher and higher in dimensions, you'll end up with increasingly uh, low, low density uh, given the same number of points. Um, as you can imagine, from 0, 1 on a line, Distance is one in a square from point to point. It's square root of two in a cube from uh, corner to corner. It's it's a uh, uh, square root of three. Um, so the distance gets larger and larger for the same number of points for uh, 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 increased amount of dimensions. Um, and so a couple of things to remedy, uh, and then I'll wrap up. Uh, basically, first count the number of mentions inside of the article, as opposed, of, uh, as opposed to just counting the number of tags inside of the, uh, the tag array that I gave it. Maybe count the number of times a Merlot comes up in the article, and then categorize that as a one. Um, and that would give me a much more uh, accurate spread of what exactly my article is about. Um, and another thing that I can do is basically create another factor by, because right now I'm only plotting users against articles. If I plotted users against other users, what I can see is a much more clear cluster. And you'll see k-means work a little bit better, um, along with a couple other tweaks that I, I don't have, really have time to go into. But um, if, if you have, uh, if you have a, a interest in pursuing this, obviously come talk to me afterwards. Um, I, I put up the test that I used from, uh, from RCS Saturday, actually, that I used to build um, the k-means and k-n uh, algorithms. Um, my code is on GitHub. It's not quite done yet. It's going to be uh, an actual blog, hopefully before the end of the cohort. And uh, uh, shameless plug, please come and read. Um, and, uh, and if you want to read a little bit more, get to know a little bit more about this, there's uh, the Stanford NLP uh, GitHub is uh, fantastic. It's, it's everything from what I mentioned. I mean, what I mentioned was the bare bone basics all the way down to um, the most, maybe not the most cutting edge, but some of the more cutting edge stuff that you'll see um, neural nets, et cetera, et cetera, out, out on the, uh, the market today. Um, so yeah, thanks for, thanks for listening. Hopefully I didn't bore you to death. <laughs>